First of all, if you measure most really good players with a driver, they're going to swing it on a plane, and I use that word loosely, of about 45 to 47 degrees. Go back to P2, please. This is more than that. Yes, this is, this is steeper. As you guys see, that's steeper than 45 degrees, this angle here, but oh well. Let's assume that this thing's at about 45 degrees. Okay, so when you turn on track man and you're looking at swing plane or us old track man, like me and Tom, we call it, we used to call it HSP, horizontal swing plane. Mm -hmm. What they're talking about, P2 please, they're talking about the travel of the sweet spot, not the shaft, the sweet spot travel from about knee high to knee high. Wherever that sweet spot's going, that's your swing plane number. And as I said, most of your good players are gonna be around 45 to 47. So we know that this sweet spot is tracking on an angle and TrackMan has told us what that angle is. Now, here's the cool thing. If this sweet spot is tracking on a 45 degree angle or pretty close to it, without getting into the math and geometry, that lets us know that however much down that Dana is swinging, he's also swinging out the same amount in relation to swing direction. Also, if he's hitting up some amount, which we can do with a driver, then that means he is swinging up some amount. He'll be swinging in or for him to the left of his swing direction. Now, let's define swing direction. I am not a fan of these circular swing trainers at all, at all but these are damn good for one purpose. These are swing direction. And if you ask Trackman, what's the definition of swing direction? They'll, they'll tell you it is where does your golf swing point at its lowest point. And we're going to assume this little seam where the metal is joined, let's call that the lowest point. So if I take an alignment rod, excuse me, Dana. Yep. Hey, Dana, can you kind of hold that for me there? Okay. And for you geometry freaks like I am, that's the point of tangency. As you guys can see, that alignment rod is telling you where the lowest point of this arc is pointing. That's swing direction. Now here's the trick, guys. Thank you, Dana. Let's assume that Dana has his club face pointed exactly down the center of the fairway. And we can say that he has that theoretically parallel left swing alignment. We've all heard that, right? And let's assume that it's true. So that means that he is working with a swing direction of what? Zero. Okay. So imagine Dana makes a golf swing and he hits the ball right there. Now this is a huge exaggeration. And let's assume for the sake of this lecture that that point is five degrees down. Then he makes another swing and he hits it at low point, that angle of attack would be what? Zero. Zero. And the third swing, he hits it right here, angle of attack, five degrees up. So we have five down, level five up. Now the swing direction didn't change at all. But watch this. At five degrees down, stop right there. If I put a alignment rod at that point, do you guys see how that alignment rod is shooting way off to the right indefinitely. And you already know the alignment rod at low point is pointing straight down the fairway. And conversely, at five degrees up, this alignment rod is shooting way over here. So what I'm saying to you is this, club path is a three dimensional entity club path is formed by a combination of your swing direction and your angle of attack. Here's the point of the conversation. This swing direction is zero. It didn't change. But because he hit down five degrees on the first ball, his club path was plus five. You saw the alignment rod pointing over there. The next swing, swing direction didn't change, but he hit the ball at low point, so his club path was what? zero and the third swing his club path went to negative five swing direction never changed but the angle of attack changed considerably and angle of attack is one of the components of your club path now think about something guys 
let's say that Dana is consistently three degrees up with his angle of attack. And he says, but Joe, I want to hit a draw. And he also says, I am unwilling to alter my angle of attack. I like hitting up because I like to launch it high and far. And that's usually a good thing, isn't it? High and far. So Dana comes to me and says, Joe, I want to draw my driver, but I am unwilling to sacrifice my angle of attack. And you, the instructor, you're like, well, Dana, we got a problem, buddy. For you to draw it, we got to get your club pad, you know, three or four degrees to the right. So you can hit the, you can hit an effective draw. How are you going to draw it with a club path negative three? You can pull draw it. That's not very effective. Pull hook it. So guys, what can I do to allow him to keep his angle of attack of three up and still hit push draws? What, what are my options? Change his swing direction. So if we took this big heavy machine and we just kind of moved it over to the right a little bit, his swing direction has now moved considerably to the right, in other words, his overall hula hoop that you're looking at, but he still maintains the three degrees up angle of attack. Do you guys see that now? That's the difference between swing direction and angle of attack. You could say swing direction is simply where is your golf swing pointed at the lowest point. And listen closely, guys. Your angle of attack is where you hit it on that swing direction. If you hit it back here, or here, or here, or here, do you guys see how there's a hundred trillion different club paths? Every time he moves that angle of attack a millionth of an inch, the club path is changing, 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 changing. So there is a hundred trillion club paths with one swing direction. You guys see that? And Dana, what, would you agree that one of the things that you and I have found that the tour player struggles with is how do they fade the ball hitting down on it? So Dana, I want you to describe to them, let's say we've got Charlie Hoffman standing here and he's got a six iron. His angle of attack is six degrees down. What's he got to do to hit a fade with a six iron, six down? I'll, I'll do it my way a little bit. Um, Cause Joe, Joe will say it simply and I'm gonna say it probably just what he might feel. He's gonna change how his wrist conditions change the swing direction and the angle of attack conversely. So you could change swing direction with the wrist angles you could change the swing direction with aiming, but Charlie has a down issue. So you gotta change wrist angles and swing direction both. And that will get him to straighten it out. So essentially, him lowering his wrist angles, you know, wrist angles are not going like this, that's gonna create more down, especially tour players. You're gonna get him, the, the better, that Rory picture that I had in there was perfect, cause his club is below his hands in and back. All he's gotta do is pivot, and Rory is all day four up on a driver. He's no. not hitting down on that six iron. Charlie Hoffman might be. If he was standing here, he wouldn't say that. But he might be. So if he's going to do that, how that doesn't mean that he needs to swing more to the left, which is probably what he would would have been told, you know, by especially me, probably like six years ago, seven years ago. So, well, let's say Charlie's got a six iron right now, guys. He's hitting down on it six degrees. Can somebody give me an idea of what his club path would be on a zero swing direction? For you experienced track man owners, six down, six iron, zero swing, uh, zero swing direction. What's the path going to be? About 3.6. The reason I ask is this. With a driver, remember where I told you they're swinging on about a 45? With a six iron, that's going to change to close to 60. Right. Which means, as it gets steeper, common sense says I don't have the same amount of out as I do with the down. The down's still there, but I, because it's steeper, I don't have as much out anymore. So on a 60 degree swing plane, you're gonna have about 0.6 out for every degree of down. So if Charlie Hoffman is six down, on a swing direction of zero, his path is what? Plus 3.6, give or take. But Charlie says, Joe, I wanna fade this thing. Do you guys see how we're not going to really change the six degrees of down. I mean, that's a good solid PJ Tour angle of attack with a six iron. That's fine. I don't mind that. 
So I can't change his angle of attack. What's left? Swing direction. So Charlie would start aiming to the left far enough such that the out produced by the down has been pulled back to at the target. And then he would continue aiming left to where now the club path is to the left of the target to allow him to hit a fade, even though it's moving out in relation to swing direction. If the angle of attack is negative, if it's down, the club path will always be to the right of the swing direction. Did you guys hear that? The club path is to the right of the swing direction. I started working with a really well-known PJ Tour player three years ago. The first swing he took for me, his angle of attack was four degrees down. His club path was negative nine. Yes, I said that correctly, negative nine. What was his swing direction? I'm waiting. Four degrees down, club path negative nine. What was the swing direction? Negative 13. Can you believe that? And after about the third ball, I couldn't take it anymore. And I said, what in the hell are you doing? And he said, well, my instructor just said swing to the left. And I said, well, you're the greatest swing to the left or I've ever seen. Don't ever do it again. I mean, he was. And the more it sliced, the more left we went because he was told just swing to the left. That's the cure. Well, of course it's not. Think about what I just said. Swing direction is negative 14. But because he was four down, that pushed the path slightly to the right of that negative 14 swing direction. You guys see that now? So always think of swing direction is your hula hoop. <coughs> Where you hit it on that swing direction, that's your angle of attack, and that's your club path. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. And one little thing, when you deal with your senior golfer, your more mature golfer, let's say he insists on playing a five iron. He just has to do it. You're gonna tell him not to do it, but he's gonna do it anyway. And let's say that you're lucky enough that his angle of attack is very shallow. Let's say his angle of attack is two degrees down. Very shallow, which is great for the slow speed golfer. But he says, Dana, I wanna draw my five iron. Why can't I draw my five iron? Well, guys, if he's two degrees down, what's his club path gonna be on a zero swing direction? About one, one and a half. He doesn't have enough path to reliably fit the face angle between it to start the ball to the right and draw it. So what do you do? You don't make him hit down more. You just bump the swing direction a little to the right. That gives him another two or three degrees of path. Yes, sir, Mr. Pinky. Let's hear it. When you're bumping the swing direction, ball yes. it relative to the ball position. What's happening to the ball position? Do you leave it where it is when they move, or do you have them move that within the yard? Fantastic question. And what I would say is this, in a vacuum, you would leave everything the same because if you move the ball and now you create another variable. I am a big fan of a really forward ball position for the amateur, for the poor golfer, for the average golfer with slow ball speeds. Why? What does a forward ball position let us do? Hit it up in the air, put a lot of dynamic loft on it, shallow the angle of attack. So, and we've done this with PJ Tour players. If you want to move that forearm way up there to hit this thing up into the air, but you still want to draw it, what have you got to do? You got to alter your swing direction. Because remember, that's one of the components of producing the club path, which produces the curve. Do you guys see that? So, hula hoop is swing direction. Where you hit it on the swing direction is the angle of attack, and those two things together form your club path. Let's say, let's say Dana was a robot, which he actually is. Sexy robot dude. <laughs> Let's say he was a robot. You know, he's Iron Byron. We could put a golf ball right there, right there, and right there. And he's going to have three drastically different shots. This one's going to draw like crazy. This one's going to go pretty straight. And this one's going to cut like crazy if the face angle is aimed dead straight. And guys, like I said inside in my lecture, the swing direction never changed. You're back here with a camera saying, my God, this is what's going on. You got the lines out there and he's on plane and it looks fantastic and the golf balls are just going all over God's creation because you can't see the angle of attack. You can't. Guys, that's it. Awesome. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.